Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amber Rose, also known as The Religious Hippie. You can basically follow me on any social media platform. Just type in The Religious Hippie and you will find me. So today we're going to be talking about my favorite devotions. For those asking, because I know that there will be people who ask, this is literally just straight pineapple juice and unconcentrated, unsweetened cranberry juice. I don't know why, but it's all the phase on like TikTok right now and I've actually really really enjoyed it and also it's good for you so I mean I don't know how good it is for you because juice really isn't that good for you. It's beside the point that's what I'm drinking for anyone who's going to ask in the comments. Okay so let's talk about some of my personal favorite devotions that I have discovered while going through this journey of coming back into my faith and really just finding ways to connect deeper with God and really just in you know my my family in heaven in general so we're going to get into that and please if you guys have any devotions that i do not mention here that you guys love please put them in the comments below i would love to see what you guys um i guess i guess love as a devotion as well so we're going to get into this so my first favorite devotion is the first Friday devotions. Now I already did a video about first Saturday devotions, which I will link below for you guys. Um, but I don't think I've done one for first Saturday. So maybe this will kind of like count as that video, but I will do an entire video on that. I promise. Um, but I really, really love this devotion. So I've linked below a PDF for you guys to go over the requirements and everything like that, that you should do for the first Friday and first Saturday devotions. But I'm basically just going to summarize it for you here. So basically what what you're going to do is the first Friday for nine consecutive months you will go to church and you will receive the Holy Eucharist in a state of grace and then you will go to confession within eight days of receiving that Eucharist for reparations committed um, for reparations of sins committed against the Sacred Heart of Jesus and also um, you should be doing it for the conversion of sinners and there is a specific prayer that I love to pray and I will also link that in the description below for you guys so that you guys can pray that prayer after after receiving communion. I also highly suggest praying the Stations of the Cross on Fridays. I linked a PDF below as well that goes through those and some other awesome prayers that you guys can pray on First Fridays and Fridays in general, really. So for those that participate in this monthly devotion, this is what Jesus Jesus is. <laughs> this is what Jesus promises. I will give them all the graces necessary for their state in life. I will establish peace in their homes. I will comfort them in all their afflictions. I will be their strength during life and above all during death. I, be I will bestow a large blessing upon all their undertakings. Sinners shall find in my heart the source of the infinite ocean of mercy. Tepid souls shall grow fervent. Fervent. Fervent souls <laughs> shall quickly mount to high perfection. I will bless every place where a picture of my heart shall be set up and honored. I will give to priests the gift of touching the most hardened hearts. Those who shall promote this devotion shall have their names written in my heart, never to be blotted out. I promise you in the excessive mercy of my heart that my all-powerful love will grant all to those who communicate on the first Friday in nine consecutive months the grace of final penitence they shall not die in my disgrace, nor without receiving their sacraments. My divine heart shall be their safe refuge in this last moment. And so yeah, now let's move on to my second favorite devotion, the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Now growing up, my mom would pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet with us, or we would have church groups and things where we would go into her churches and they would pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet, all this awesome, awesome stuff. But I never really understood the Divine Mercy Chaplet until I started actually listening to Drew Mariani's show on Relevant Radio. He prays the Divine Mercy Chaplet every day at 3 p.m. and that really inspired me to start praying it regularly like I do my rosary and it has given me so many blessings honestly. God is so good. But I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I failed trying to pray this as I would my rosary a lot. Like I, I would have this goal set for myself where I'm like, okay, I'm going to pray this at 3 p.m. with Drew Mariani on Relevant Radio. But because my schedule is so topsy-turvy, I would babysit sometimes in the afternoon. I would have that. I would have this. And so I couldn't always pray at 3 p.m. like Jesus instructed St. Faustina. And I got really frustrated with myself. But I was like, you know what? If I have something busy going on that day, I'm going to pray my Divine Mercy Chaplet in the morning. 
and God knows my heart. He knows that I am true to this devotion. And I know a lot of traditional Catholics have some issues with this because it only started becoming popular after Vatican II and all that other stuff, but I have seen the miracles that happen from this Divine Mercy Chaplet. And if you don't want to pray it, that's okay, that's fine. It's not like the rosary, of course. You cannot even compare it to the rosary, but I do suggest giving that this devotion a try, and, and really, I mean, it's so, it's so amazing. I mean, there's nothing bad about it at all. It's asking for God's mercy, and it's just such a beautiful devotion. It has such beautiful words, and Jesus, I trust in you. If you guys know how I came back into my faith, that was one of the things that got me through one of my hardest times. And I didn't even know that those words came from the Divine Mercy Chaplet, Jesus, I trust in you. And so um, I highly suggest you give this a try if you haven't already. But these are the 14 promises that Jesus Christ made to those who have a devotion to the Divine Mercy Chaplet. I promise that the soul that will venerate this image of Divine Mercy will not perish. I also promise victory over its enemies already here on earth, especially at the hour of death. I myself will defend it as my own glory. The souls that say this chaplet will be embraced by my mercy during their lifetime and especially at the hour of their death. When hardened sinners say it, I will fill their souls with peace and the hour of their death will be a happy one. When they say this chaplet in the presence of the dying, I will stand between my father and the dying person, not as a just judge, but as a merciful savior. Whoever will recite it will receive great mercy at the hour of death. Priests will recommend it to sinners as their last hope for salvation. Even if there were a sinner most hardened, if he were to recite this chaplet only once, he would receive grace from my infinite mercy. I desire to grant unimaginable graces to those souls that those souls who trust in my mercy. To priests who proclaim and exalt my mercy, I will give wondrous power. I will anoint their words and touch the hearts of those to whom they will speak. The prayer most pleasing to me is prayer for the conversion of sinners. Know, my daughter, that this prayer is always heard and answered. At three o'clock, implore my mercy, especially for sinners, and if only for a brief moment, immerse yourself in my passion, particularly in my abandonment at the moment of agony. I will refuse nothing to the soul that makes a request of me in the virtue of my passion. The two rays donate blood and water. These two rays issued from the very depth of my tender mercy when my agonized heart was opened by the lance on the cross. These rays shield souls from the wrath of my Father. I desire that the first Sunday after Easter be the Feast of Mercy. Whoever approaches the font of life on this day will be granted complete remission of sins and punishment. Mankind will not have peace until it turns with trust to mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion in a state of grace shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. Through this chaplet, you will obtain everything if what you ask for is compatible with my will. My mercy is greater than your sins and those of the entire world. So I'm also linking this below for you guys, the chaplet and everything, how you guys can pray it in case you guys are interested in doing that. I believe this is one of the best devotions I've ever come across and it's so, so beautiful. I mean, what's more beautiful than God's mercy, truly? So I highly suggest it and that is in the description for you guys. Okay, so our next devotion is the devotion to St. Joseph. Now, you guys know that I love St. Joseph. I have ever since I was a really small girl, and honestly, my devotion only grew to him more as I did the consecration to St. Joseph, and honestly, that's probably one of the best things I've ever done was the consecration to St. Joseph. And this is the book I used. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this book by now, but this has saved a lot, a lot of how I viewed men and just St. Joseph in general. It's truly an amazing book and I highly suggest it to everyone. It's one of the best things I've ever done besides the Marian consecration as well, um, consecrating myself to Jesus through Mary. Um, but this is one devotion that I will preach from the rooftops until I die. Like, it is so important that we understand that Joseph is our heavenly adopted dad, like adopted dad, so to speak. <laughs> Um, and that he, he's a protector, he's a provider, he's there to show us the way. And, um, you know, especially for men, I think it's great to imitate Jesus, but also to imitate St. Joseph. And so, and for ladies to look for somebody like St. Joseph, 
who imitates Saint Joseph and for us to be Our Lady, you know, I mean that's a little harder because Our Lady was sinless, <laughs> but um, to really imitate them as a holy family is just so beautiful and so I absolutely love this devotion. So here is a prayer that I pray to do this devotion. You can also do the Memorare, you can even do the Saint Joseph Rosary, which is also another beautiful uh, devotion prayer, um, but this is personally the prayer that I pray um, to do my devotion to St. Joseph. To you, O blessed Joseph, do we come in our tribulation, and having implored the help of your most holy spouse, we confidently invoke your patronage also. Through that charity which bound you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and through the paternal love with which you embraced the child Jesus, we humbly beg you graciously to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ has purchased by his blood and with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities. O most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, defend the chosen children of Jesus Christ. O most loving Father, ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupting influence. O our most mighty protector, be propitious to us, and from heaven assist us in our struggle with the power of darkness. And as once you rescued the child Jesus from deadly peril, so now protect God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield, too, each one of us by your constant protection, so that, supported by your example and aid, we may be able to live piously, to die holy, and to obtain eternal happiness in heaven. Amen. And that prayer is also linked below for you guys if you would like to add that to your prayer routine. All right, number four, the Holy Rosary. My mom is texting me. Hang on. Sorry, I'm in like this book club thing and the book that we're reading you can't purchase online and so my mom just ordered it for me on Kindle and thought, okay, anyway. All right, the next devotion we have is the Holy Rosary. I think this one is obvious. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't it be on this list? But I wanted to include it because even though it is an obvious one, it is still one that has impacted my life so much that it just wouldn't be right if I did not include it, no matter how obvious it was. So because this one's so obvious, you pray the rosary daily um, and all the different mysteries that go along with it. Um, honestly, the Sorrowful Mysteries are one of my favorite. Which one are your guys' favorites? I know that a lot of people like the Glorious Mysteries, which I am also a huge fan of, but there's just something about the Sorrowful Mysteries that I just, I adore. Um, so I'm going to read you guys the five promises Our Lady has made to those who recite the rosary. Um, so yeah. Whoever shall faithfully serve me by reciting the rosary shall receive signal graces. I promise my special protection and the greatest grace to all those who shall recite the rosary. The rosary shall be a powerful armor against hell. It will destroy vice, decrease sin, and defeat heresies. The rosary will cause virtue and good works to be flourished. It will obtain for the souls the abundance of mercy of God. It will withdraw the hearts of men from the love of the world and its vanities, and will lift them to the desires of eternal things. The soul which recommends itself to me by the reciting of the rosary shall not perish. Whoever shall recite the rosary devoutly, applying himself to the consideration of its sacred mysteries, shall never be conquered by misfortune. God will not chastise him in his, just, in his justice. He shall not perish by an unprovided death. If he be just, he shall remain in the grace of God and become worthy of eternal life. Whoever shall have a true devotion for the rosary shall not die without the sacraments of the church. Those who are faithful to recite the rosary shall have during their life and at their death the light of God and the plenitude of his graces. At the moment of death they shall participate in the merits of the saints in paradise. I shall deliver from purgatory those who have been devo devoted to the rosary. The faithful children of the rosary shall merit a high degree of glory in heaven. You shall obtain all you ask of me by the reciting of the rosary. All those who propagate the Holy Rosary shall be aided by me in their necessities. I have obtained from thy divine Son that all the advocates of the Rosary shall have for intercessors the entire celestial court during their life and at the hour of death. All who recite the Rosary are my sons and daughters and brothers and sisters of my only Son, Jesus Christ. Devotion of my rosary is a great sign of predestination. I did a video about the rosary a while back, and to be honest, I probably need to update it and do that part two that I said I was going to do, and it's been like a year now and I still haven't put the part two up, but I am linking that below for you guys if you would like to learn more about the 
biblical roots of the rosary and a little bit more about that. So I'm linking that below for you. Okay, and so our final devotion, which is one of my top favorites, I know I said that all of these are my top favorite because they are all my top favorite, but this one tops all my top favorites. I don't know if that makes sense. All right. So this devotion is the devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows. I've been really connected with Our Lady of Sorrows ever since I came back into my faith. And whether it's just like little day things, you know, little day issues, problems, or whatnot, um, compared to huge issues that I don't share on the internet, um, she has always been there for me and has been one of the biggest supporting roles in my life um, coming back into the, my faith. Um, and so being able to just align whatever I'm going through with what she felt on Calvary, you know, seeing her son crucified, um, and then therefore uniting my own suffering with Christ's, um, it's very comforting. It's a very comforting feeling. So there are seven sorrows of Mary. You can, of course, pray the sorrowful rosary. There's also a, um, what is it, a sorrowful um, chaplet that I pray as well. I don't have the book with me, but... I do use this book quite a bit, um, and it does have a lot of prayers in here as well. It doesn't have the chaplet in here, but it has the Dolores, and it has the offering, the morning offering. So that's that's really cool. So she has uh, seven sorrows. These are those seven sorrows. The prophecy of Simeon, the flight into Egypt, the loss of Jesus for three days in the temple, meeting Jesus on his way to Calvary, Jesus crucified, Jesus' crucifixion and the death of Jesus, Jesus taken down from the cross, and then Jesus being laid in the tomb. And then for those that do this devotion, this is what Our Lady promises. I will grant peace to their families. They will be enlightened about the divine mysteries. I will console them in their pains, and I will accompany them in their work. I will give them as much as they ask for, as long as it does not oppose the adorable will of my divine Son or the sanctification of their souls. I will defend them in their spiritual battles with the infernal enemy, and I will protect them at every instant of their lives. I will visibly help them at the moment of their death. They will see the face of their mother. I have obtained this grace from my divine son, so that who's, so that those who propagate this devotion to my tears and dolors will be taken directly from this earth life, earthly life to eternal happiness, since all of their sins will be forgiven and my son will be their eternal consolation and joy. And many don't know this, but Jesus himself actually made four promises to those who devoted themselves to his sorrowful mother. The first one being that those who before death invoke the divine mother in the name of her sorrows should obtain true repentance of all their sins. Second, that he would protect all who have this devotion in their tribulations, and that he would protect them especially at the hour of death. Third, he will impress upon their minds the remembrance of his passion, and they should have their reward for it in heaven. And number four, that he would commit such devout clients to the hands of Mary with the power of dispose of them in whatever manner she might please and to obtain for them all the graces she might desire. So overall, those are basically the five devotions that I love the most and I practice the most. I would love to know what devotions you guys love, what saints you guys love to ask intercession for, and all that good juicy Catholic stuff. Absolutely, 100%. So let me know in the comments below. But with all that being said, I hope that these devotions have helped you. And hopefully the PDFs linked in the description below will help you as well. Um, maybe further your faith in these devotions or even start them if you haven't yet. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!